Hey, this is Mr. Gianelli with your technology tip of the week, and today I'm going to be talking about a website called Zaption. Zaption is a site that uh, is going to allow you to embed videos into your lessons, and you're going to break the video up into chunks and only use part of the video that is uh, important. And that's basically going to be a good way to keep students engaged and uh, participating instead of just sitting there and watching the lesson. So in order to uh, get started, click on Get Started. And easiest way for me was just signing with Google, but the rest you it's pretty self-explanatory if you'd rather use something else. So I've already created an account, so I'm in. And uh, I have created a, a presentation for my students. Here is, um, let me just start over. Here's one called Photography Techniques, and I'll just click Start here, and you can see what this looks like. So let's take a picture. With Whoa, let me turn that sound off. Um, so... Basically, the video plays until it hits this line right here. I'll just move it forward. And each time it hits one of these lines, the video stops. And a question appears. And here it says, what does he need to do to the camera to make sure the blade appears crisp and not blurred? And the students have a chance now to answer their responses. And their responses are going to appear on the screen. Once we've had a conversation about it, I hit play. And we will move on. And the video continues and uh, it keeps going until the next one. So that's basically how this works. Um, let me show you guys how to get started with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on Zaption right here. That's like the home page. And I'm gonna click on New Lesson. And it says, find a video to add to your lesson. So let's say I wanna do one on Adobe Illustrator. So there we go, and uh, here is a video. I'll just go ahead and use this, add this to the lesson. And as you can see, the video is very long, but maybe I only want to use part of it. So let's just say, for whatever reason, I want to use this little part right here, this little yin yang thing. So I will uh, use the trim tool right up here. And I will take this slider, which is the end, and put it here. And I will take this other slider which is the beginning and maybe I'll start right here and then I'll click save and that's the part that it's gonna show now in the free version you can only do one video at a time um, I know there's a paid version which has a lot more features but it's not too cheap I think it's like a hundred dollars or so a year so uh, yeah I mean it's, it's still a good tool but there are definitely some limitations which I'll talk about all right, now that we've uh, created the video and we trimmed it, what you want to do is just move this timeline to the place where you want to stop the video and ask a question. So let's say your first question's right here. And then you're going to go up to the top and you can either choose open response or multiple choice or check boxes um, or drawing. So let's say that, I don't know, we want to have them do an open response. I'll just You can either stick it over here on the side where it kind of pops up or it'll go right in front of the video. I don't think it matters too much, but I'll just put it over here to the side, and the question will be, what tool is he using right now? I'm sure you can think of better questions. Um, so I'll just click, uh, well, that's all I have to do, actually. I can now move on, and let's say I get to this part of the video. And I can add my next question, and I can do maybe a multiple choice. And I will say, I'll drag it. Let's say I'll drag this one uh, right in the front of the video. What shape is this? That's a tough one. And then you can add your choices. This is a square, no, circle. And then if you want to add more, you can. So then you move on. And I'm not very giving very good examples of questions. I'm sure you can think of very uh, deep and higher order questions for your students. Let's do a, a checkbox. This is kind of, they just check in all the answers that respond. Um, you know, what are the different colors or whatever. So those are the three main types of questions. You can also do a, a drawing, which I haven't experimented with too much. But basically they can draw over parts of the video, which is kind of cool. So if like there's an, a part of the video where maybe there's something that needs to be labeled, maybe the students can write down a couple of words to, um, to do that. And let's say that we're ready. Uh, we're done and we're going to publish it. And we will call this one um, 
sample two. Because I already did sample one earlier. And there we go. Now I'm going to show you what it's going to look like for a student to uh, log in and what they're going to be seeing if I present this. So when I first presented this, it was kind of, um, I made a mistake. I had the students go to zaption.com and they all started creating accounts and they found the link, but they were all doing it on their own, but YouTube was blocked, so a lot of them couldn't see it. And so I realized that when you do this with your class, you have to click on this present button. And the students, instead of going to zaption.com, they need to go to zaption.com slash join. So you can just have write this link down and have them go there on their uh, site. So I'll just, over here, I'll show you what the student side would look like. So I'll paste that. And then I'll take the um, code and I'll paste that as well. Looks like I already did. And there we go. So it recognizes me as John, John Ginelli because I did this a few minutes ago. Um, as a student. So the students will be asked at this point to enter their name. So I'll just click continue. And it says the presentation will start soon. So the student's waiting for the teacher to click start. Now as soon as the teacher starts, see if I can keep this minimized. Oh, it goes full screen. I guess I can help that. Uh, the student right now is going to be seeing on their screen, not the video, but they're going to be seeing this little hand thing instead. Um, and that hand is going to allow them to ask questions. So let me go full screen here so you can see that. Let me resume the presentation and uh, this is what the students see. Ask a question. So I have a question. My question is hello. Hello? There. So the student submits the question and the teacher will now see a little hand here and they can click on it and it says this. And you can even click show names if you want to know who actually asked the question. Um, at first, you'll get questions like this because the students think it's fun to uh, interrupt the lesson and uh, write nonsense. But just explain to them that it's very important that they um, only use this if they have serious questions. And if they, you know, can't use it properly, then just what I usually do is just have them close their Chromebook and get out a piece of paper and they can answer the questions that way. They don't like that. So, all right. So the teacher finishes answering the question, moves on, and the video plays. And then once we get to this little line right here, the video will stop. And the question pops up. And this is what the student's going to see. Let me go to their end again. The student's going to be seeing this right here. What tool is he using right now? And uh, the student will have a chance to answer yes, submit. So now when I go to the teacher side, I can see the responses by clicking over here. And I see that one of the students answered yes which doesn't make any sense. Um, it does not tell me which student, though, said what answer. And that was something that I found a little bit frustrating with this program. But, uh, you know, at the end I can see who said what, but it does not give me a report. All that is from the, um, the pro version. So let's say, okay, I'm happy with all the responses. We had a discussion. We did a pair share beforehand. The students all answered in complete sentences. We move on. I click play. And the video continues, and we go to the second part, which is the drawing. And the video stops right there. Okay, and now on the student side, they are going to see... Oh, it didn't stop. Huh. You know what? I guess this is not for the students to draw. I have never tried this before. This is for the teacher. So if you wanted to mark something up, you would have the opportunity to do this. But I, I was kind of disappointed because I was hoping that this would be a chance for students to uh, to draw something. But no, I guess this is just if you wanted to mark up something on the video. Um, the students themselves are not going to have the opportunity to do that. So I click play, that drawing goes away, the video continues, and again when we get to the next little mark, the student will have a chance to answer a question. And this one is just a check. I think that's a square. Let me submit that. And then I see that my students are not too bright for high school students because they thought this was a square. But uh, at least I know, hey, I got to go back and I got to reteach um, shapes. So good feedback. And then we move on. And that's basically how it works. Uh, at the end, you do get analytics, but they're not super helpful. They will give you like average uh, responses. Um, you can look at the responses of individual students if you click on each part of the question and it'll tell you who said what. But again, you want to download a report and it says, please give us some money. 
90 bucks a year, which isn't too bad if you, um, if you like this. And then the